to the program. We're talking politics now with Liberal Party frontbencher Kelly O'Dwyer. She joins me live from Melbourne. Thanks very much for being there. Pleasure, Peter. Let me just ask you uh, right off the top, we've seen that the Speaker, Bronwyn Bishop, uh, apologised both to Alan Jones on radio and then uh, in a media conference as well. What do you think took her so long to get round to apologising? Well, I think she gave a very heartfelt apology. It was clearly an apology that she acknowledged was long overdue. She said that she wished she had made that apology three weeks ago when this issue first came up. Uh, she knew and acknowledged that what she did was wrong. She apologised to the Australian people for that. She reiterated that apology after her interview on Alan Jones through a press conference and I think that was right and proper for her to do that. I think it's right and proper that she did issue an apology to the Australian people. But what do you think took so long? Well, she herself said that she wished she'd made it earlier. I, I can't uh, go into the mind of the Speaker Roman Bishop. I suspect uh, none of us can. She'd be better. She'd, she'd be she'd be better able to answer that question herself, I think. But but she has made an apology. She has made an unreserved apology to the Australian people. And I think that's what the Australian people wanted to hear. Well, yesterday, uh, senior frontbencher Scott Morrison uh, refused to say that he supported the Speaker, Bronwyn Bishop. Uh, the Deputy Liberal Leader, no less, Julie Bishop, not only refused to say that she supported Bronwyn Bishop, but she said that she would no doubt be considering her position. We now know that she's not. She's made it clear today that she isn't considering her position and that she wants to continue on. Uh, does Bronwyn Bishop have as Speaker, have your support. Well, what the Speaker also said today in her press conference is she said that she is going through all of her expenses, that the Department of Finance is looking at that in some detail. She wants them to go through all of her expenses in some detail and that they will then come to a conclusion, issue her with their findings and potentially make recommendations. Now, I'm not going to prejudge that process. I think it's entirely appropriate for that to be concluded before making any further statements. But does she have your support? Well, you know, it's clear that there is a process on foot at the moment, Peter, that is looking at uh, whether or not there has been any misuse of the entitlements. Uh, as we all know, every member is responsible for their own use of the entitlements and they quite rightly have to make sure that they are spending taxpayers' money within entitlements. Otherwise, again, quite rightly, the opinion of the Australian taxpayer will be very, very harsh. Their judgment will be very harsh. So I'm not going to prejudge the process. It's ongoing at the moment, and I think it's right that it be concluded. But it's a, but it is a simple question, though. In, subject to the findings, does she have your support? Well, let's see what those findings are. Peter, before we, we go into commentary and hypotheticals. Uh, Bronwyn Bishop has been a very strong speaker. Bronwyn Bishop knows the standing orders inside and out. Bronwyn Bishop, I think more than anyone else probably in the parliament, understands the importance of the role of speaker and the dignity that comes with that appointment and how it reflects on the dignity of the parliament. But it doesn't sound like you're willing to say that she has your support at least, which in fairness well, neither was Scott Morrison, neither was Julie Bishop. Well, as I've said to you before, Peter, uh, there's a process that's on foot at the moment. I don't prejudge the process. I I'll await the outcomes. Do you think that that process should be revealed to the Australian public uh, after it's completed? Normally, of course, Department of Finance investigations like that aren't subject to public scrutiny, but do you think given the public scrutiny of this issue and the public attention that it's received for so long now, that they, those findings should be made public? Well, I think the outcomes will clearly be made public. Uh, I think there's no doubt about that. And it's right and proper that it be made public. Uh, there, there can be no sort of opaqueness when it comes to the use of taxpayer dollars. And I think Bronwyn Bishop herself acknowledged today that uh, what she did was wrong. She apologised for that. And she has said that she is very keen for finance to go through her claims and to make sure that everything is in order uh, and to make sure that everything is within entitlement. How does the Speaker that's been put on probation by a Prime Minister uh, even maintain the facade of independence? 
Well, the, the, the Speaker is uh, independent and impartial in their role. They need to be. That is important for the smooth functioning of the Parliament. Uh, in terms of probation, uh, they, they were the Prime Minister's words. I think he was really expressing there that it was important for the Speaker, just as it, is, as it is important for every Member of Parliament, to make sure that they are using their entitlements properly and that they are making sure that taxpayers' funds are being used properly. All right, let's move on to other issues then, can we? Yesterday there was a debate uh, between Penny Wong and Corey Bernardi on the issue of same-sex marriage. Uh, my understanding is that the Prime Minister has been canvassing whether or not there's support for a plebiscite on this particular issue. And I know some Liberals, members of Parliament, your colleagues that I've spoken to, who have said that they have even suggested to him that a plebiscite is the best way to go. Uh, would you be open to the idea of a, a plebiscite on this issue, or do you think that the Parliament should make the decision? Well, I haven't been canvassed. I've seen reports of that, but I certainly haven't been canvassed on this. And I know that uh, my, my Senate colleague, Corey Bernardi, in his press club address yesterday raised the prospect of a, a plebiscite. I, I must say, I, I think we, we took a very clear position to the last election, and it was a position that was made clear by the Prime Minister himself. He said, this issue is one that is for the party room to determine. Uh, we as representatives have to make judgments about all sorts of issues in representing our constituencies, and this is no different. Uh, the Prime Minister said the party room will have a discussion about this issue and we will determine uh, our response on this issue. I think that's right and proper. I'm very confident uh, that we will do as the Prime Minister has said. Well, can, I can I just no check on that, Ms O'Dwyer? Because uh, my understanding was before the last election that, yes, the Prime Minister did say that there would be a party room discussion on this with the determination of what to do going forward in this term. But it feels like there's been slippage on that in some of the rhetoric since then. Uh, you're confident that that commitment ahead of the last election will be met during this term, that there will be that Liberal Party room discussion this term, not next, about what to do, whether or not to allow a conscience vote? I am absolutely confident. I am absolutely confident that the Prime Minister will, will keep that commitment. Absolutely. Of course I am. The Prime Minister has also said that he's interested in considering, at least, the prospect of targets uh, for females in Parliament for the Liberal Party. That's something that I know uh, some time ago you said that you were in favour of. It works for Corporate Australia. I spoke to the Prime Minister's advisor within the Ministry on Women's Issues, Michaelia Cash, on to the point with Christina Keneally just a matter of days ago. Uh, she also sounded perhaps like she had an ear open to the idea of targets. Is this something that you think could manifest itself uh, in the next short while for the Liberal Party? Well, I think targets are very important because targets allow us to measure our progress. Targets are very different to quotas and uh, Michaelia Cash, who, who is the Minister assisting the Prime Minister, has also acknowledged this point that quotas are a very... Oh, I've just lost my earpiece. Quotas are a very blunt instrument and they're very prescriptive and they don't work in party organisations like ours. We're a grassroots organisation, the Liberal Party. We're unlike the Labor Party, which allows factional warlords to stitch up deals to shoehorn people into particular seats. Uh, that's not something I want to see the Liberal Party emulate. But targets allow us to focus the mind of our grassroots membership to work out who is the right person to represent us in particular seats. And the Liberal Party, which has had a very, very strong and proud tradition in the advancement of women, uh, knows that when it comes to having more women in the parliament and progressing more women through the parliament, that uh, we've got a little way to go. Mm. Just finally, Kelly O'Dwyer, if I can, just, I just want to go back to Bronwyn Bishop just for a moment. If parliament reconvenes, if she's still the speaker, if we haven't yet heard the outcome of the inquiry by the Department of Finance and there is a motion uh, of no confidence against her and Liberals are expected to line up uh, and support her on that, as you inevitably will. Uh, that'll be a pretty awkward moment, though, for a lot of Liberals, surely, not least of which Craig Warndy, uh, who made the point, I think, in the Saturday Telegraph, uh, that if entitlements weren't in play, he thinks that Bronwyn Bishop may have chosen to walk from Melbourne to Geelong rather than catch a chopper. <laughs> I'm not sure what your question is, Peter. Well, it'll be awkward, won't it? I mean, it would be an awkward look particularly for marginal seat Liberals, uh, to be lining up to show a vote of confidence in a Speaker under investigation by the Department of Finance 
uh, having made one after another, I will call them misuse of entitlements, even if they're technically legal. Well, we've now entered into the realm of hypothetical questions, and I have a policy of not, not answering hypotheticals. All right, no, fair enough. All right, Kelly O'Dwyer, I appreciate you uh, joining us on Newsday. Thanks for your company. Pleasure. All right, we're going to go 